Hebrews uh, chapter 11, and let's start in verse 4. It says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, and uh, by which he obtained witness that he was a righteous God, testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he, and this test he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God and of things not seen yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place where he should, after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a stranger, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles, with Isaac and Jacob, and heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now, I'm going to stop right there because uh, i got more there probably than I can get to through th today and this morning in the next few minutes. But I'm going to start back up with Abel since we, uh, we started there last week, but, uh, or he got into that Abel last week. Um, Abel, it, it, you know, talks about worshiping a right. Uh, faith worshiping a right. And uh, with the, he had the right sacrifice. Cain didn't. Cain was the first false religion that ever hit the earth and the planet. There's a lot of it now, but it has grown. And I think I ended up with the, 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 the Sunday school lesson last week. You can wrap all world religions and all world cults because here's what I'm told. Preacher, there's no way in the world I can know what all these cults and these world religions believe. You're right. You're right. I've studied a bunch of them and still don't know what they all of them believe. And, uh, but there's a bunch of them out there, and there's other ones that are starting all the time. And it's, it, it is something, I'm, I'm telling you. But when, he, when you narrow it down, it doesn't matter what they're called, where they're from, what language they speak, there's only two types of salvation ever been known to man. One is salvation by grace. And the other one is salvation by works. That's it. And, and when you look at various denominations, people say, well, why aren't you a Catholic? Why aren't you a, 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 a holiness? Why aren't you a Pentecostal? Why aren't you this? Why aren't you that? Why? I mean, we all believe in the same God. We just believe in getting there different ways. Well, there's, there's a problem because there's doctrinal differences, and mainly it's with salvation. And when you start thinking about salvation, you know, it's either salvation by grace or it's salvation by works. And the Bible condemns a salvation by works. Amen. I mean, for by grace are you saved yes. through faith, Amen. not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Paul wrote that very clearly in Ephesians 8 and 9. Uh, 2, 8, 9. And then you, then, you, then you think, you know, Paul told us in the book of Romans, if it's by works, then it's no more by grace. And if you add one thing to, to the gospel of Jesus Christ, then it's works. If I have anything to do with it, it's works. I mean, if well, you know, preacher, you know, uh, if, you know that per person don't go to church. That person don't do this. That person, you know, uh, hey, look, it's not ba my salvation is not based on how I perform. Because if it was, we'd all lose it. Amen. amen. Y'all with me? Say amen right there. Amen. Amen right there. My salvation is not based on how I feel. Some days I don't even feel like I'm too saved. And uh, I'm thankful that my salvation is totally based on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection. The gospel. He paid it all, did it all, and is doing it all. Amen? 
And the only thing I have to do is receive it. And, when re and receiving it is not doing anything. Receiving it is just accepting what he's already done. Amen? And so uh, Cain, you know, he brought of the fruit of the earth that he grew, planted and grew and tilled and, and worked. And, and then he brought that because you think about it. Well, let me bring you what I did. Look what I did. God doesn't care what you do. God wants, Abel brought the blood of, of a sacrifice. And that's what God wanted. It's the blood that atones for sin. That's the reason Jude talks about in verse 11, the way of Cain. There's a way, and that's the way of works. Doesn't matter what you call it. They didn't have a name for his false religion in, in, in back in that day. <laughs> Doesn't matter. And because uh, Cain, by bringing forth the works that he brought forth, ignored Calvary, ignored the sh shedding of the blood. Now, did he know about Calvary? No. But, you know, but, God, but he should have known about the blood because what happened to his, I'm sure that Adam and Eve had set down their children and let me tell you what happened in the garden. Don't you think that conversation took place? I would think so, wouldn't you? And, uh, you know, there was a time we walked and talked with God and then the serpent came into the, uh, the, the garden and, and, you know, and I was deceived and your dad took forth of it and we became sinners and we were naked in the bushes and God came to us and told us, asked us who told us we were naked and, and, he, and he, then Adam all of a sudden started blaming the woman and they started pointing the fingers and, and, uh, and, and then the Bible says they covered themselves with what? Fig leaves to start with. They covered themselves with fig leaves. But what did God do? God covered them with hides. Skins of animals. See, again, you got them trying to do something for their sin. That's what that's talking about. Versus God doing something about their sin. Amen? And all of that was symbolic of the cross that's going to come thousands of years later. Okay? At that point. And uh, so Abel bought the more excellent, verse 4, where he says... Uh, you know, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. And uh, so in fury, Cain killed Abel. And, uh, and I think I made a comment then that, uh, you know, here, uh, you know, Cain would kill Abel, but he didn't, want to kill, he, he didn't want to kill a lamb to bring it as a sacrifice to God. Because he probably looked at it, well, I got all these lambs over here, and I don't want to lose any of them. You know, and that's the way people do it today. Well, we got to be, we, we got to be conscious and, you know, and frugal and you don't want to do this. Well, God said do something, do it. Amen. Simple as that. Take him by faith. Okay. Now, let's look at Enoch. So, Abel is worshiping, faith worshiping a right. Enoch is faith walking a right. Because look at verse 5 and 6. He says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Well, how did, how did, how did uh, Enoch please God? He had faith. Because the next verse says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we are to believe that Enoch believed, like verse 6 says, he had faith, and he wanted to please God, knowing that he one day going to receive a reward from God himself. So Enoch was such a faith-walking man that God rewarded him. One of the rewards was he was translated and didn't die. Now, that's pretty good because I, the Bible in the book of Hebrews 9, verse 27, just a chap, chap, couple chapters over says, and as is appointed unto man once to die after this judgment, we're not going to get out of here without death. Unless Jesus comes, then we go up in the rapture and something's got to happen then. We've got to be changed. I'm not sure how that's going to work because it's not told. But we're going to be changed, you know, in the, in the resurrection somehow or another. Now, whether we die and we resurrected on the way up, I don't know. Whether we just changed on the way up, I don't know. 
I just know that we're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. That's in 1 Corinthians 15. But in it was faith walking aright. And uh, it's kind of interesting, some of the, you know, words, you know, here it says, by faith was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. But for before his translation, he had this testimony, please God. If you go back and look at Enoch, he was the seventh in, in Adam in the, in the line of, uh, in Seth's line. Now I'm going to tell you something about Enoch that a lot of people think that's kind of interesting, I think. Um, and so... You got Enoch, who's seventh from Adam in Seth's line, and um, then you, he's the first to escape death. That's the fruit of faith, and we could go back and look at that, but we but we we won't. But he pleased God, and it reminds me of a missionary by the name of David Livingston. I don't know how many of you ever remember David Livingston, but he was the famous missionary to the continent of Africa. Uh, you know, you know when he, you know he was his body when he died. When David Livingston died, they brought his body back to England and buried it in Westminster Abbey. Now you say why? What? what why you say that? Well, you know, to be buried in Westminster Abbey is it, it, notable. Not just anybody buried there, okay? And, um, and one of the newspapers in the day of the, on the day of his funeral stated, granite may crumble, but this is a living stone, making a play on his name of Livingston. Granite may crumble, but this is a living stone. And uh, so Enoch, you know, had a great impossibility in verse 6 when he talks about, but without faith it is impossible to please him. He pleased God because he had that testimony, verse 5. And he, he had a great imperative that he was looking forward to that reward and he was diligently seeking God. And, 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 and that's what we should do if we want to, uh, you know, have, and wanna, we want to please God and have faith, okay? And uh, faith, of course, begins by grasping, I think, one great basic essential fact. And that is there is one true and living God, and He is the one that we ought to seek. There's only one true and living God, and we ought to seek Him. I think that's the greatest act by faith that you and I can do in our lives is to seek Him. And you seek Him by what? Go to church, read His study His Word, pray, go out and work, and, and, and you know, do the work of what the Bible says we ought to be doing. And, um, you know, and having, yeah, nurturing that personal relationship with the Lord, all that nurtures that personal relationship with the Lord. All that does. And uh, read His Word, study His Word, pray over His Word, uh, pray for others. And so that's Him. Then we come to number three. We had Abel who is uh, worshiping aright. We have Enoch who is walking aright. We come to Noah he is faith witnessing aright. You say, how's that? Look at verse 7. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. There's where faith comes in. Doesn't that go back to verse 1? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things what? Not seen. So Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Mood with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So, now, 
as I was studying this one verse, making some observations, and then writing them down so I wouldn't forget the observations. <laughs> so, you know, you got to write them down. If you don't write them down, you say, it's like I preach my best sermons at night. In the middle of the night, when I'm, when, I, when I'm sitting there, I come up with the best messages and sermons in the world. And I said, boy, that is so good. I'm going to remember it tomorrow because that's good. I get up the next day and the only thing I remember, it was good. That's all I remember. I don't remember what it was good. I just remember it was good. And uh, so uh, I need to get me a piece of, Brother David, I need to get me a piece of paper and put it by the bed and a pen. And when I have those thoughts, get up and write them down. And, uh, but there's a problem with that, though. I don't know anybody like this with, except me. I'd probably get up and get my Bible out, start reading the thing, and end up having a midnight Bible study. And, uh, and I probably wouldn't go to sleep for another hour and a half. And uh, so I don't get enough sleep as it is, so I don't need, I don't need to mess with it too, too much. Okay, you got me, right? But it would be good. Amen. And uh, so I wrote these things down about in verse 7. And I got to thinking about no, what Noah being first. You know, God would. You know, God God called Noah when he was like a hundred years old. I mean, you know, he was a, he was old. He was an older man when he called him. So, what was Noah to God? Why did he put him in the Hebrews eleven in the New Testament? Why in the in the faith that's demonstrated? Why is he, does he represent the faith witnessing aright? Okay, first of all, Noah was mindful. And this is where we can take example out of this. God gave these examples to us to learn. Okay, why was Noah put here? Number one, Noah was mindful of the Word of God. He was mindful of the Word of God. Now today, a problem in the church has, ari has arisen that we're not mindful of the Word of the Lord, of the Word of God. Now, you got some churches. I haven't been there. I don't know. Uh, and, uh, but I, well, I've been to a couple in my life that I, I said, Lord, get me out of here. I won't go back. But, you know, but, you know I don't try to be disruptive. But some people tell me they go to churches, you, you know, they take their Bibles, they think we're going to be like ours, and they get up there and they didn't even need the Bible. You know, because the church is not mindful of the Word of God. How do I know that? By faith, Noah being warned of God. So he's mindful when God came to him and told him something, even though he had never seen it before. Now, he was warned of God of things not yet, as things not yet, right? Uh, and as I think about not seen as yet, so as I think about that, I think now, I go back to Genesis, I go back and read the account, I go back, Noah, it's going to rain. He ain't never seen rain. Now, could you imagine going out today and telling people something that they've never seen before that's going to happen? Isn't that basically what we're doing? We're out going out there telling them, hey, look, you better get right with God because Jesus Christ is going to come. Now, there's one difference about what we're doing and what Noah did. He had never seen it. At least Jesus has been here before. Right? right. But he's coming back. And because people can't see it and visualize it, and think about somebody coming in the eastern sky and rapturing out millions of people. They don't give any thought to it. Matter of fact, just like Peter said, there are some people that mock us because of it. Well, I've heard it all my life that Jesus is coming back, and I'm old, and my grandmama and my grandma, my great grandmama, and all of them are dead now. They believed it, but they went to the grave believing it. So did Abraham. So did Noah. So did all those other places people believed that, you know, in God and what God said, and they went to their grave believing it. But that don't mean it's not going to happen. Because the Bible says when He comes back, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. You know the reason I think that God is going to raise the dead before He takes us out? Because they had faith before we did. A lot of them. They were before us. Amen? A lot of them. 
And they went to their grave believing it, some of them. So he was mindful of the Word of God. And then secondly, he was moved by the fear of God. He says, yet moved with fear. Now, I don't believe Noah was scared of God. As we think about fear, I think he was respectful of God's voice and respectful of what God told him. And he moved, you know, with, with, with diligence and moved with obedience because he had a reverence for God. And that's something we're missing today in our churches as well, is reverence of God. So we can learn something from Noah. Then thirdly, not only was he mindful of the Word of God and moved by the fear of God, he was mighty in the service of God. Prepared an ark for the saving of his house. Now he's going to build a boat, a big boat. Nobody's ever seen that much water before. I don't know why you bit. They were making fun of him, remember? But he was mighty in the service of, the, of God. You and I, regardless of what our family thinks, regardless of what our friends think, regardless of what our foes think, regardless of what our co-workers think, regardless of what anybody thinks in the church, outside the church, we ought to be mighty in the service of the Lord. In other words, don't let somebody steal your reward by saying something or doing something that just hurts your feelings because it's going to happen. I might as well go ahead and tell you. If your feelings hadn't been hurt, just stick around because they'll get hurt some, at some point. Somebody's either going to do it on purpose or somebody's going to do it inadvertently, meaning they don't mean to, they just do it. And it may be me. I, I, don't, I don't set out to hurt anybody's feelings, you know. I believe sometimes people set out to hurt mine, but uh, sometimes I take it personally. And uh, you say, oh, preacher, you know, people love you. They never hurt you, your feelings. Oh, I've had my feelings hurt a bunch. I sure have. And uh, I've even told God, I, 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 was like, I was like Noah one I mean, you know, not Noah, Moses. I was like Moses one time. I said, Lord, just take them on out of him. You know, just, just zap them, get, get rid of them, you know, you know. And, and then I, I told God, I said, God, I done had it. I'm quitting. And, uh, you know, and now I, you say, preacher, you ain't never quit, have you? Oh, yeah, I've quit a hundred, I, I quit a thousand times. I always come back next day, but I, I quit, though, that day. Wouldn't be human if I hadn't. Amen. Amen. But he, he was mighty in the service of God. In other words, my whole point about that is don't let others dictate your service to God, your love for God, and, and, and what you're going to do for Him. Just get in there and put your head down, serve God, and don't worry about it. Amen? Then number four. There's only four. He was not only move, mindful of the word of the Lord, not only did he move by the fear of the Lord, not only was he mighty in the service of the Lord, but he was marked as a child of God. Look at verse uh, 7 again. The Bible says, By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Now what does all that mean? In other words... It was only Noah and his family that got in that ark. The rest of the world just didn't believe, did they, at that time, right? And even though the majority was against him, Noah believed the word of God. He accepted what God said. And the Bible tells us in the end of this verse right here that and became heir 
of the righteousness which is by faith. That's salvation. That's salvation. Because you and I, when we get saved, we become heirs of the righteousness, which is by faith. Because the righteousness is the righteousness of God or the righteousness of Christ. You get into the imputed righteousness of God, Christ. When Christ died and then you accepted, then what Christ did is put his righteousness on your account. So when God looks at it, it's just as if you never sinned one time. Isn't that good? So we're going we're gonna to end. The, that's the primeval. Primeval age, primeval age of, of you have, the, you know, the, those people. And now we're going to get into next Sunday, we'll get into the patriarchal age and talk about Abraham and, uh, and, that, and that group, okay? Let's get ready for church. <laughs>